Hey everyone, in this video we're going to verify a trig identity, which basically means we're going to take a look at something that is presented to us as an identity and just check to see if it could be true. We won't know if it absolutely is true, but we'll do something quick to convince ourselves that it might be true. It's kind of like when you're going uh, out of Costco with a big buggy full of groceries and you have to show your receipt to the person standing at the door. Basically, they just do a quick once over, maybe take a look at a couple of items on their seat, check that you have it in your buggy and let you go. They don't really know if you've maybe added a few extra things in there, which I am highly not recommending, but that's basically what we're going to be doing here with trig identities. It's just kind of taking a look at the buggy and going, yeah, yeah, that looks right. Um, but we won't know for sure until we get to another video on proving identities. Anyways, let's get started. So uh, our example, our only example for this video, is to verify the possibility that cotangent A times sine A is actually equal to cosine A. And we're going to do this two ways, uh, one by graphing and one where we actually you know, approach it algebraically. So by graphing, what, what we'll need, of course, is our graphing calculator. So here I've got the graphing calculator. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go into y equals, and I'm going to type in the left-hand side of this alleged identity. So cotangent is 1 divided by tan x. And, and I could also type it in as cos x over sine x because that's what cotangent a is also equal to. Um, and then, of course, I have to multiply by sine x. OK, so there's the left hand side of uh, this statement of equality. And then cosine x is on the right hand side. So I'll type cos x. OK, and what I'll do is I'll just go to the left of this y2 where I'm on this sort of little uh, slash and I will just press enter and that makes that slash a little bit thicker. So when I graph it, if it's an identity, then I should see like the regular graph and then I should see like a thicker graph on top of it. OK, excuse me. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'll go to zoom and then I'll just pick this trig window. It doesn't always work, but it it often does work. So why not? I'm going to try this. So watch very carefully, okay? You might have to slow this down in your video. So as soon as I press seven, it's gonna graph. Okay, so first it graphs the left-hand side and then it graphs the right-hand side. And you'll notice that it graphed the right-hand side right on top of the original. Okay, so if you missed that, I'll show it to you again. Uh, if I go in here and hit graph again, it doesn't change anything. So I have to fool the calculator. So what I'm gonna do is I'll press sign here and then just go back and press cos. Okay, so then the calculator thinks I've done something to it. And so it's gonna have to graph again. Okay, ready? Don't blink. Here we go. Boom, okay. So the graph of cosine x graphed right on top of the graph of cotangent a sine a, or cotangent x sine x. Okay, so um, we are reasonably convinced that this is an identity, right? Because if an identity is basically an equation that is valid for all values of x where the, where the identity is defined. And if it graphs right on top, obviously they're the same, okay? so. We believe it's an identity from graphing. Now let's take a look at uh, an algebraic approach. Okay, so the algebraic approach would work something like this. <clears throat> um, first, we need to separate this into a left-hand side and a right-hand side, and this is very important. This is so important, in fact, that I've, I've drawn this, this vertical line down here to visually separate the left-hand side and right-hand side. Please do not do anything like divide both sides by sine A. Right, you can see that if you divided both sides by sine a, you would get cosine a over sine a, which you know is cotangent, and you figure that you've probably proven it. Okay, but a, we're not proving anything, and b, you can't actually divide both sides by anything because then you're treating it as if it were an identity. Okay, so that's a very subtle distinction. You you can't, if you're trying to prove something as an as an identity, you can't start off by assuming that it is. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. All we're gonna do is take each side, one side at a time of this expression, and sub in whatever is given to us. Okay, so when you get a question like this uh, in your assignment or on, a, on an assessment, it will give you a particular value to test. Okay, now if you encounter one of these in a dark alley, you know, later on in your life and you actually have to verify it and they don't give you, they're not going to give you a value, you just pick a value. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So we're using pi over 3, so I'm going to sub in pi over 3. Uh, as a, so cotangent pi over 3 times sine pi over 3, and then using the unit circle, okay, let me just grab a unit circle here, one second. 
Okay, so here's my unit circle. And so basically what I have here is pi over three is approximately, let's see, right about there, okay? And uh, let's see if we can remember the coordinates. So right there, pi over three, okay, that's the wrong color. Pi over three, we have a uh, half, and then root three over two, I do believe. So the cotangent of that would be x over y, which would be one over root three, okay? And then the sine of that would just be the y coordinate, root three over two. So let's see if we're correct. Indeed, one over root three, root three over two, and then the two root threes cancel, and we're just left with half. Okay, so if you sub in pi over three in for a, the left-hand side will be equal to half. The right-hand side is very simple. It's just cos a, and you're gonna sub in pi over three for a. And if I were to go back to that unit circle that I drew, pi over three, the cosine of pi over three is just half. Okay, so we get half, regardless of which side we're on, and so therefore uh, we are reasonably convinced that this is an identity, okay? Now you can see the fallacy of that, right? It would be like saying, walking into, a, in walking into your math classroom where there are, you know, boys and girls, and saying, everybody in this classroom is a boy. And then proving it, proving it, by simply asking a boy to stand up and say, look, there's a boy, done. I've proven my statement that everybody in this class is a boy. Completely ridiculous. That's really what we're doing here, right? Algebraically, we're saying, gee, I don't know if this is actually true. Let's try one single value. So we tried pi over three in for a, and it turns out that both sides end up being half. And so now we're concluding that that must be true for all values. Well, no, um, that's ridiculous. Okay, so this is not proving anything. This is just showing that this so-called identity actually works for that single value. In order for you to prove it, you would actually have to sub in like every single possible value, pi over six, pi over five, pi over 12, right? Negatives, it, like all of them in there. And that's not possible either. So in a subsequent video, we'll show you how you can prove it once and for all without having to sub in all possible values. Okay, so before I go, we should do uh, one last thing, and that is just wrap things up. Left-hand side equals right-hand side. Okay, that wrap, wraps things up. That shows that you know that you're done the verification because both sides are equal. Okay, and that's the end of the video.